This is BeatStars Gurus, the music marketing podcast for ambitious musicians. It's powered by BeatStars. The easiest way to sell beats, songs, albums, and keep 100% of your sales. To start selling for free today, visit BeatStars.com. Hey music makers, my name is Abe and I'm the host of the Beat Stars Gurus podcast. Each week we put out podcast interviews with successful musicians, experts, and entrepreneurs that will help inspire, motivate, and give you tips to increase your sales, traffic on your Beat Stars store so you can live the life that you dream of having. And this week we sit down with Mike Downey of Sound Saves, our 2014 top selling producer on BeatStars.com, and he explains how he went from the ground up licensing in his studio to licensing music for major TV, film, and being a top selling production company based in Denver and now residing in Los Angeles. What's up, Mike? How you doing? Hey, great. How are you doing, Abe? Oh, man, doing awesome, man. Thank you for joining us today. It's our first ever episode of the Stars Gurus podcast. We can't wait to learn all about you, your production company, Sound Saves, and um, let's get right into it, man. Who is Mike Downey, and what is Sound Saves as a production company? Yeah, thank you. And I, I'll kind of go back through a brief history then, starting with myself, and I grew up on a farm in Ohio, listening to all the top billboard hits, you know, dreaming of one day getting to Hollywood and one day being working in the entertainment industry, but not from a musician standpoint. I studied the music, but from a business standpoint, and I just, you know, was immersed in that world, reading all the trade journals and periodicals and on Billboard and listening to Dick Clark and Casey Kasem and all the, the hits, and you know, from rap to uh, rock and, and pop and even jazz and other genres. And I just uh, love music and what it can do for the human spirit and the mind and, and everything. And it got me through a lot of hard times in my life. And eventually then, uh, I graduated from college in Ohio, went out to Colorado and started in sales, marketing, started a couple entertainment businesses, more on the sports side of things at first, working with professional athletes and Carmelo Anthony and the Denver Broncos and a bunch of other um, uh, teams and, and athletes over the years. And through that, then I started getting involved with bands and managing bands and then working with rappers. And we put together a band then that was a rock hip hop band and opened up for STS9 and Sugar Ray and toured all over Colorado and did a Lakers Nuggets halftime show and had all this success from, you know, starting things from the, the ground and building them up. And then meanwhile, we started our own production company. And so we had a big studio in Colorado and we were bringing in other artists and we were producing our own songs and we were discovering people. And we started working with DJ Ill Will and Kid Inc. and uh, had all these beat placements and on Wiz Khalifa's Cushion OJ, etc. And so we were really finding that... Um, you know, a little taste of success there, but we were in Colorado. So we said, well, you know, we're going to have to, uh, uh, expand and, you know, move out of here because it's, uh, you know, there's still a feeling and you just, you, you can only get the attention of major, um, players and so many independent artists, even from, you know, being in Colorado. So we moved to Hollywood and now we've been here for two years and we do everything from, uh, you know, our, our branding for our artists and producers to websites to obviously, uh, you know, we put together a ton of production and then we sell that to artists all over the world. And we do film and television placements and comp- composition, soundtracks. Uh, we record artists. We write songs. And, you know, see, we, we've been through the entire gamut and now we're just taking it to the next level. Yeah, very cool. I mean, that sounds like, you know, a very organic kind of story starting starting out in a small town, um, you know, building your network and your business with people locally in your area and taking that same model and, um, you know, taking it, taking it on the internet, right? So it kind of sounds like it was uh, initially your company was more focused on, you know, the demographic of, of where you guys were from and doing business, you know, hand to hand and, 
and, and, and in person and developing those relationships. Now, your sound saves definitely has um, a big presence on the web with you know beautiful websites and um, social social media presence and in stores on places like BeatStars. Now, um, how how have you seen that transition from you know taking that production company um, from Little Town in, in Colorado to to the web where the you know the internet is just you know engulfed us all. Yeah, you know, the internet has been so amazing, obviously, because, yeah, we don't have to go out and do the hand-to-hand combat as much, per se. You know, we did so much street teaming. I mean, we just exhausted ourselves sometimes, right? I mean, you're on the road. You're, uh, you know, you're you're out at the shows until two, three, sometimes we're even, you know, doing setup or tear down and, you know, of course, all the equipment and and uh, then the aftermath of that and following up everybody and, you know, from the previous of all the ticket sales and the promotions. So now it is, it's nice because we can work more um, virtually and, you know, obviously some costs have gone down with the internet, you know, and I feel like it's deflation in a way and we can do so much through the phone and through Skype and Viber and WhatsApp and Facebook messaging. I mean, LinkedIn. I mean, we have it's like twelve different websites, including even a chat, you know, tool where people can get a hold of us all day long, uh, including right. obviously BeatStars and the great messaging that's on BeatStars and um, all the the amazing features. And it's like, okay, we can do these things now where we can kind of huddle up and say, okay, take a breath, let's focus on the music. Let's make the music better. Let's not cut any corners and let's look at the opportunities that are out there and also kind of take a, you know, a moment to say, okay, this is what's going to be hot coming up because a lot of it is, you know, um, you want to analyze what you're doing, but you also want to do some predictive planning and say, okay, this is what we need to have done now for three months from now. So, you know, that's, uh, I think going back to the power of the internet and what a site like BeatStars has been able to do is connect people all over the world and do it from, you know, their home or their, you know, a smaller studio or uh, a place like Hollywood where, you know, it's great. We can be out walking around and talking to people on BeatStars and then run into Comet, you know, which we did at the movies the other day. And, you know, it's like, okay, now we're kind of doubling up our productivity too, so... Right, right. That's awesome, and and we'll we'll go deeper into like you know your strategy on how you guys create your content, why you choose certain content. But uh, let, let's get into some of the um, roster of producers and artists that you guys represent, or maybe have represented in the past. Uh, would love to hear some of those people that you guys have worked with. Yeah, and it's you know it, it certainly has ranged so much, and at, at, at different points in people's careers, we've been involved in the in the outset, and then eventually they got signed to a major label, and we kind of had to take a back seat, or we didn't remain on as management, or we just ended up doing some independent contractor type of stuff. But I guess we'll talk about current. Well, I guess I'll go back to the past first. So we really started with. Uh, a gentleman who's like our top producer on our team now back in 2006 and his name is Kashmir Royale and he was in a band then or a group called Yes Sir and that had a song that was charting across Colorado and you know it was a duo and then he broke off from the artist that he was in that group and we signed him then over to a label that my late business partner that passed away unfortunately almost two years ago now um it was he had discovered cashmere and so we had partnered up and we said okay we're gonna um you know put together a band now with cashmere and do all these other things so cashmere royale has been you know working his butt off in music since 2006 and now has, has got to a point where we're really close with some you know bigger major placements even and then along that way we began to collaborate with other artists uh other producers, other songwriters, and then also discovered artists out on the web. And we got one guy signed to Maroon 5's label, a and Records, Adam Duncan. And he's been on a, a few tracks that we've had on Beat Stars, And then uh, Kid Ink, of course, and he's had wild success. And now with RCA Records and um, many, many other artists and producers that some, you know, honestly, some have fall off. I mean, we've been in this so long that some guys are now, they've got their own clothing brands or, you know, they've had 
children and they've you know gone on to other careers and then some have stuck with it but the current guys into our roster besides cashmere royale are nasa osiris decades chasing and then some other guys will send in beats every now and then that we still have signed so it's just also a matter of you know what we find is it's who really sticks with it consistently and will you know go no matter what even if they've got to take you know other jobs along the way or if they do have families they just keep pushing and they keep making music and that's what we really encourage our guys to do but of course uh you know we stand by some we'll stand by people and sometimes they got to take eight nine months off and then come back around and right. you know it's also just kind of fitting together the pieces of the puzzle in which one of the features i love on beat stars is the collaboration but it's now becoming okay well if somebody else doesn't have the time to be a full-time producer they can still come in and add a hand with you know throwing a piano down or um you know maybe remixing something or adding some other drums on and that sort of thing so that's really the approach that we take with it and that kind of gives you a, a, a look at inside look at the team who it is now and you know um some of the names we worked with you know going forward which other ones are like lecrae we had a couple tracks on a grammy nominated album with lecrae uh you know Wiz khalifa and uh in the very beginning you know when he was uh not a lot of people even knew who he was yet and and so on and so forth a lot, a lot of artists on cash money young money that some are are now not on that roster anymore but uh you know now we're really pushing to go more into the you know uh, Dr. Luke's and working with, uh, you know, Max Martin and these huge names that are in the business. So that's really what we've been focused on recently. Cool, man. And, and my, my condolences about your, um, your business par- partner. Sorry to hear that, man. Um, uh, thank you. So, He's yeah, a good guy. I, I mean, you know, so there's, um, you know, it, it sounds like a very, uh, very kind of open door collaborative company um, where you have a bunch of different music personalities contributing to different content. And then you on that on that side, it's kind of like managing where that content goes, which is super, super awesome. That That, that is a skill on its own that, you know, not a lot of uh, musicians have. Um, so with, with with your role in kind of managing the whole company, um, is that is that something that you feel like is uh, critical to a producer or artist's career? Do you feel like they 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 need someone that plays your role to kind of facilitate and manage um, the business side of things? Yeah, and I, it also depends on what stage somebody is in their career. So somebody who's new and getting just started out and really, you know, just says, hey, I have this, maybe they're 18 years old and, you know, in their mom's basement. They, I just have this inkling. I really want to be a big time producer. You know, one day I want to be uh, on the billboard charts or one day I want to have music in film and television. And, you know, they have at least a glimpse of a vision and they know they want to make music. Uh, then that is a very early stage obviously and this also you know means that they may need to realize that they've got to work their butt off for seven or eight years or maybe longer to have that dream fulfilled and so then i think that you know you you need as many people in your corner as you can get you know you need people who of course encourage you to keep going but then you need the people who are going to give you the truth because what happens with a lot of um musicians i've seen over the years is they have people in their corner they have a lot of friends and they have a lot of family but they're going to always tell them their music is great even though it needs work you know or it's maybe not arranged properly or the mix uh the decibel levels are not set at the right you know uh frequencies and you know well maybe their guitar really needs to be a live guitar you know to replace their keyboard guitar or well, maybe they're not the best at the piano yet, you know, and they need to go get somebody who is the best at a piano. Um, maybe they do have really hot music and they have learned all those skills and, you know, they've hung out on sites like BeatStars and they've listened to the pros and that kind of thing. And then all of a sudden now they've got, um, you know, some hot music, but they say, well, what am I going to do with it? How am I going to make money from this and monetize it? Not just on selling some beats to maybe local rappers or rappers that are on beat stars but getting that you know music now onto um you know into film and television and you know other opportunities so i think that 
that is where somebody like me and there's obviously a lot of other managers in the business that so you can go out and you can find a manager you can find somebody who says i want to be a manager and i'm going to go learn this with you when you're a up-and-coming musician but you know i've been through the entire gamut to really cut to the chase now with people and say okay this is this from what i can hear and what from what you're telling me and you know and what i'm hearing from the music this is our these are my um this is my best advice based on you know all these years in the business but i'm also staying up to you know current speed on all the new technologies all the new ways to shop things but it really gets down to this the music has to be great and you have to have a great story with it you know and that's where i try to you know get get is back to that structure and that foundation that okay this is how you can take a um you know your story as a musician and position this to a brand to the correct audience because the world's still full of billions of people now it's about how can you get down to a target audience if you have a thousand amazing fans who are going to buy every you know new piece of music that you put out and they're loyal they're going to go to your shows they're going to you know buy your merchandise and you can start to expand on that so um you know targeting is another big aspect i look at yeah so i i hear a lot of targeting and you know hitting hitting the right um demographics with with what you're talking about and it seems like because your content lives in so many different areas you're you know you're pitching to tv and film supervisor music supervisors right and you're you're just dis- you're distributing actual albums and songs and then and then you're selling beats on beat stars now when you're when you're kind of scouting and auditioning new artists and producers i know you mentioned that you really want to see a consistent flow of music being cranked out but is there is there also a certain type of flexibility that you look for is there is there a certain type of where where you look at an artist or producer and you're like you know what this guy you can't really put him in a box and you kind of like that because you're someone that can use different types of music in different types of business scenarios is that is that something that you 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 know kind of look for you know very um i guess what i'm trying to say is like is that something that you always are thinking about when you're 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 auditioning or looking at new talent definitely diversity is so important um and uniqueness you know if a uh, unique style and i think that where when i hear that happen it's usually because they first understood the structure and the arrangement and they were able to say okay this is uh, in spacing and mixing and when you kind of get those those foundational components down and then you put something unique in these cool sounds or a unique way that they did it or maybe they're they do have a strength for jazz and they combine jazz with EDM uh you know or it's a uh, violinist and they also know hip hop and you know you get these things and you put them in that kind of structure and that foundation i mean and this is it to say that you can't go out and release a song that's 20 minutes long that's amazing everybody will listen to but you know it's you kind of have to get to the point when you're when you're going to demonstrate something right you have to get your chorus right at the beginning like you know you don't want somebody to wait a long time with this 20 second intro Mm -hmm. you know that that is like i'm not sure what's going on yet or there's a whole bunch of uh you know words in the very beginning that are like tags you know i know people like to put their own tags and things in in the music sometimes and do these big orchestral builds and things but honestly you know when you're talking about going through so much music which is what a person like me does and what I'm sure you do and people on beat stars does you got to grab some of attention right away so if they can grab my attention right away with something different and that's usually going to be some kind of cool unique sound and put in a you know a, obviously some kind of a nice chord progression some kind of a nice melody if it hits me with the chorus right away I love that that's when my ears perk up right away because now I know what to expect that's the hook of this song and you're going to you're going to grab me with that hook right away you know or even just the pre-chorus and it's something that's really strong i'm going to keep listening but now you got to keep that thought and put yourself in that the listener's shoes and say okay have i got them every four bars and you got to tug at me each four bars until i've listened to the entire track and gone, wow i have to talk to that person you know and that really happens far and few between at least for somebody like me maybe i'm super picky 
or I just get too much music or, you know, I just listen to too many songs in my life. And of course, I hang out on also sites like Spotify where I'm listening to hits from, you know, the 1950s mm -hmm. all the way up to day. And I'm listening to the viral 50 and the global 100 and all that, you know. So that's, that's the type of music that I think that people need to put out. And they have to put themselves in that listener's shoes and just grab them. And then I think things like artwork and, you know, the producer's name and all that all, be, all become secondary. Mm -hmm. But if you can grab somebody with that music right away, then you've got them. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's been a you know ton of success stories, especially, you know, e even on BeatStars where you have, you know, producers that literally have, I don't know, 100 followers on Twitter and really no one knows them on the public um, social media, but their music speaks so loudly that their you know their sales are through the roof on BeatStars, and that's what I think a lot of uh, producers forget that it's um, you know when artists are looking to you know purchase a license of your music, they only care about is that music going to fit on their album? Is that music going to fit their story? Right? It's not about the credit. Mm -hmm. It's not about the credits. It's not about the Grammys. It's not about you know all the different you know publicity that you get on the outside of BeatStars. When people come to BeatStars, it's really all about the music. And um, and I think you guys were you know one of the first kind of um, you know companies or, or production companies on BeatStars to really capture you know, the essence of that and have a consistent release flow and um, garner millions of plays on BeatStars and thousands of followers now. And you guys have even changed your name a few times. Um, so, you know, it, it just shows that it's not really the name, the credits, the, you know, who you've worked for, but it's about the quality of the music. Now, um, you guys being, mm -hmm. you know, you guys being the, the top selling, you know, members on BeatStars for, for a full year, um, you guys have seen a ton of success, made thousands upon thousands of dollars. What what do you feel like was one of the biggest success factors um, during that time um, when when releasing beats on BeatStars? Well, it's hard to pinpoint just one of them. I uh, mm -hmm. I know for sure that it helped that we were one of the first people on BeatStars, and then we were having that consistent flow and it, we were real active in one um, one music studio production house now we're a little spread out and you know things and we also um, you know kind of put a little bit more emphasis now on like super quality over super quantity but at the mm -hmm. same time um, we also had a big admin staff and this is where you know put it out to the BeatStars community and anyone is we need a little more admin help but when we were, um, you know, in Colorado, of course, wages and cost of living are a little lower than in California. But, right. I, you know, I'd like to find somebody on the Internet to help out. But we were really doing a lot of admin work and a ton of marketing and sending a ton of people um, onto our page and that sort of thing. And so I think mm -hmm. that because, you know, the move and then losing my uh, business partner and then in that process, you know, you brought up the name change. And that was... Um, brought on by really wanting to do something uh, positive and so we started going out and you know dedicating some of our time to charities and uh, getting music to people who needed it for like healing purposes and that kind of thing but that back to the 2014 success I think that what's happened is now and this is this is a great um, you know tribute to your community but it's the competition's a lot higher now too so we got to step our game up even more because in 2014 we were not competing with as many people on beat stars mm -hmm. now there's a lot more people we have to compete with and so we need to step our game up even more and so that's what we're really pushing right now to do and over the next three months you'll see a lot of new music from us uh new artwork on the site you know do a little bit more admin work if i can get a little help and just kind of categorizing the beats correctly and you know sub genres and that kind of a thing and um yeah, we're super excited about this spring and summer, and we love these stars. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah, now really excited to hear, you know, all the new stuff. I mean, Kashmir has been so, so consistent for you guys. Um, you know, just touch on him a little bit. Like, what what is his work ethic like? Is he is he literally in the studio every single day cranking out music? Seven days a week, and I'll tell you, the work ethic... Uh, is incredible with him and he just pushes and pushes until 
he can get to the next level of something. And um, Kashmir, to give a, a quick background on him, he was not a musician growing up. He loved music, but he did not learn music until about age 19. And he really learned rap first. So he's a rapper first. He's a performer first. He was doing underground clubs, the, all everything. But he was finding, okay, well, you know, I, I, he wasn't able in 2006 to find that great a beats online. I mean, yes, you could go to sites like SoundClick, which totally sucked, you know, <laughs> and it was like, you know, impossible to find anything on there and dealing with people was, was difficult and then there just wasn't a whole lot of other ways. So he said, I'm going to start making my own beats. Well, he had no idea how to do that. So he, you know, went out and started um, researching, you know, and figuring out, okay, this is how you put together drums, et cetera, et cetera. And then he became very good at like sampling and kind of DJing and that kind of thing. And he said, well, I got to still take this to the next level. So that's one of the reasons we put together a band and started working with other musicians because we said, okay, well, we need a great piano guy because Cashmere doesn't know piano quite well yet. And then he taught him music theory and mm. piano. And so now Cashmere all of a sudden became that much better at his craft. And so over the years and getting to now, is now he can do everything. He can mix, he can rap, he can write songs, he can write choruses, he can, you know, his drums have always been good, but he's got, you know, great drums. He, he learned, uh, you know, all, every, all the aspects of sound. He studied, you know, he studies a lot, but he was always studying, you know, okay, what did it take for these guys to get to the next level in their careers? And he watches all the videos, the producer tutorials, even he, he you know, is always looking for new sounds and mm -hmm. software and technology. And I feel like you got to have to be a little bit of a computer geek these days, <laughs> you know, yep. to get good at this stuff and he is that he's like likes programming and he had learned you know uh c++ at one point and just that kind of thing and so you know that work ethic is there though and at the end of the day i think everybody has to have that is of course you got to step away and you got to go find your balance and however you find your balance but you got to come right back to it you got to constantly be living and breathing and eating this because it drives at you and you say i i got to be successful and that's him and uh, it's great because it motivates the other guys too. It gives them a, a bar to reach. And he also has a bar to go reach as well when he's looking at, you know, the top producers in the game. Um, mm -hmm. But he's also with, I think anybody, you know, these days, but it's certainly with somebody who's been in music for quite some time now and is still independent, then, you know, we have to keep um, changing too with the times because mm -hmm. the music that we were selling in 2000, you know, seven, eight, nine, two thousand fourteen on BeatStars is not the same hot music today. Right. So you constantly have to be evolving and getting those new sounds and learning how to mesh some EDM with the hip hop, with trap. You know, uh, and so now although those genres merging, and uh, I think that's that's one of the the things that he's done. He's done very well, and and so yeah, his work ethic is is astounding and. Uh, we just push each other too to, you know, keep getting better. And, and it's also looking at opportunities. You know, here's like Beat Stars has opportunities on there. Here are the artists mm -hmm. that are looking for tracks right now for their next album or their next mixtape. You got to be able to take those opportunities and go, okay, I think I know what they want. Because, right. well, they, you know, you have a little description with it, but you've listened to their past music and you've studied it and you go, I'm going to make something directly for this person. Mm -hmm. And that's what Kashmir is, is, uh, has really done well with. He's always going and making music that artists want to get on because he was an artist first. Wow. You know, that's that actually speaks a lot um, in regards to like, catering music to, to so many different opportunities you know i always tell producers i said man you you're just you're just a painter you're you're a painter with a with a production software don't you mm -hmm. know don't ever pigeonhole yourself to just one certain sound especially when you're selling beats online now if i always tell them if, if you if you're a producer that's you know signed to either like a major label or a major publisher and you know there's a certain degree of artists that are looking for your specific sound then that's a different that that's a different story we we live in an age now where collaboration online is everything and the more people you collaborate with the larger mm -hmm. your presence becomes and the more success you you will see with your you know with your online business so um, I'm really glad you spoke 
spoke about the diversity and him staying with the times and not really putting himself in a box in regards to the music he makes because I think it's super important for people to know that if you want to be successful online, especially the new guys, that you have to be very diverse. Um, but I also wanted to to kind of just touch on real quick about you know your your TV and film licensing um, part of part of your business. I think you guys have done a, you guys have done a lot of that over the years. Um, you know, it's a very uh, very it, it could be a very confusing kind of you know business. And with you being in in Hollywood and kind of like the epicenter of of where movies and music and film is made. Um, you know, how do you navigate through all of that for your clients and how do you and how do you kind of see yourself succeeding um, with the music that you represent? Well, there's a, a couple of aspects to it. I mean, one, it's staying in touch with the music supervisors and figuring out what are they working on currently and, you know, what what do they need? And it, typically those needs are they need it pretty fast. And so it's we're constantly reaching out and saying, hey, what are you looking for right now? What do you have coming up? Uh, you know, and it's either trailer music uh, for the, you know, trailers are huge. You, you know, you can watch all the trailers on IMDb or, or Apple and it pays very well if you can get a song or, or music into a trailer. Uh, and then the movies, so soundtracks, uh, certain scenes and TV shows, and then also music supervisors and ad agencies uh, that are, you know, pl placing music into commercials. And of course, background music then for you know ESPN and sports and um, you know things like that. So it's getting you know staying in touch with those people. Then also looking on the trade boards for opportunities because they do get posted a lot. Of course, the thing you have to keep in mind is who's the opportunity with, and can you make a personal connection with them, and do you really have something for that opportunity? Because you know music supervisors don't want to work with people who are, you know, they say, hey, I'm looking for this, um, you know, 80 beats per minute, you know, hip-hop song that sounds like uh, Eminem, you know, from Lose Yourself, and, uh, you know, it's a, a new boxing movie or whatever, and then somebody sends something that's 100 beats per minute and totally doesn't sound like that, then you lose their trust and they're never going to read your email again or you know, anything. And then you got a bunch of other middlemen, and, you know, there's sub-publishers out there, and there's big music licensing catalogs that they go to a lot mm -hmm. like APM and you know Opus and things like that and so but if you really just want what we do is just cut through the noise and go straight to the studios like Paramount and Warner and Sony and Disney and figure out okay what are they looking at now and then of course the major ad agencies and then do we have something to fit that and nine times out of ten it's something that's usually pretty upbeat pretty pop might be something you know that has some live guitars or live band on it um or is in the electronic dance kind of space and so we have certain tracks that we place really 10 15 times because it just fits always for any you know the general type of scenes or like when empire you know do new uh new season you know kind of what tracks they're already going to be looking for and right. And you have these these new cheerleading shows and stuff on VH1 or Keeping Up with the Kardashians. And they just have to fill a lot, you know, in TV, constantly looking for music. And so it really is about having it mixed very well, though, and having your files correct. So, you know, we do a lot of the upfront metadata and organization work to make sure, okay, do we have the instrumental version and do we have the version then with vocals and do we have a pitch sheet to go with this that gives them all the information and then having everything registered, of course, correctly on ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC. And uh, oftentimes, you know, opportunities do come up from overseas, so you have to be able to work with those, you know, collection societies, and you got to make sure there's no samples in it because if it's unclear sample, they're not going to touch it, and you'll also lose, um, you know, any kind of credibility in the business because they'll say, no, nah, you can't work with those people. You know, they need it free and clear. And they need it now, you know. Mm -hmm. so, did yeah. that give you kind of a better look? Yeah. You can ask me any follow up questions on no, it. No, you know, it's, um, there, it just sounds like a, a many step process. And I think, um, you kind of have to have some experience under your belt to kind of know exactly what everybody needs. Um, you know, I think the, the big, the big, uh, the big part that you spoke upon, I think that is the first part I think everyone needs to, to focus on is 
is the metadata and 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 having the files um, to your tracks and really cataloging your stuff the right way and having all your stuff registered with the performance rights organizations. You know, I think if you, what my experience with the music supervisors is that you know everything needs to be cleared. There, there, it, mm -hmm. it really gets messy when you have too many writers, too many. Um, you know, too many producers, too many, too many people attached to a track. Um, and that's what's great about, you know, what you do as a management firm is being able to clear everything that's being created from your company and having and giving those supervisors the confidence to want to use your tracks. Um, and I loved, I loved how you spoke about, you know, creating you know, one track that has been licensed 14, 15 times. Um, I, I hear it every day on TV. I, I hear, you know, you know, I'll hear the same background music in certain movies, films, advertisements all, all the time. There, there, there is a certain sound. There's a certain type of uh, BPM tempo uh, instrument that really resonates scientifically with the viewer, mm -hmm. you know, scientifically with the viewer. And I think what you guys do is pay attention to what's being used on current seasons of shows, current, 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 um, current movies, and then preparing your catalog for that follow-up season. If you feel like that, that show is successful. I think that is brilliant. Um, this is, this is, this is information that not many, um, you know, music, music producers or recording artists get to hear on a daily basis. And, uh, Really, really happy you brought that stuff up, but uh, yeah, I think you nailed it. You nailed it on all those all those different points. Yeah, and, uh, the only follow up I could think there is dig a little bit into that metadata, but is it put yourself in that music supervisor's shoes? In that it's going to be okay. They need certain, you know, if you watch TV and you watch film and you understand character and development and everything, is you've got certain moods certain you know themes that you know either lyrics need to cover or even if, if some of the stuff will license just has a chorus on it because you think look these guys aren't using the entire song the entire song is not going to play you know in your commercial right. you've only got 15 30 seconds or in your tv show it's like going to be background music for 30 seconds maybe so it's like you just need to hit that that mood in a short super condensed you know dramatic element there and like you said in the certain tempos but it's that theme and that's what are those words that are being said and then what kind of scenes will those fit for and, you know somebody's not gonna and this was the, one of the top music supervisors in the business i met with like three years ago was like look we're not going to use a song when somebody's on a bicycle and they're sad about being on a bicycle and they're, you know, saying sad. Those lyrics are not going to fit for that. We're, it's going to be something that fits the mood, you know, and it has to complement what's happening, but it's not literal, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's all. It's just that in that metadata, if you can get that down, you can say it fits these three moods. Oh, and then the similar artist that it sounds like, then it's going to get placed over and over. You know, if you sound like, um, you know, Fetty Wap and, you know, uh, um, a couple other major rappers and that beat has that same sound, then when they're looking for it and they say, look, I don't have 50 grand or 100 grand to pay Fetty Wap to use a song. I need somebody that's going to, you know, take 5,000, but sounds like Fetty Wap. Then you also have to be able to fit that. And that kind of goes back to that metadata. And if, if you can answer all those questions, then you makes your song way more licensable. So do you recommend, now i got a question for you. So there's a lot of producers mm -hmm. are going to hear this. A lot of creators are going to hear this and be like, oh, wow, I'm completely lost. This is, I, 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 I have no idea where I'm going to start my approach in regards to getting my music <laughs> placed on TV and film, right? From, from even, even from my point of view and me doing my pitches all the time as well, is that do you feel like, well, I do. This is, I mean, I certainly feel like that companies like yours is a great starting point um, or other licensing companies um, that are out there is a great starting point to get your music included in those people's catalogs that are kind of already doing these things already in their day to day. So you can, you can learn, you know, the process rather than, 
you know, hounding, finding a music supervisor for a certain show, and then you just start hounding them with with emails and tweets, and you start sending them music that's really not related to what their projects are, are you know, what they're working on, um, and really losing losing that trust that you were saying, and kind of never being able to regain that trust ever again because that supervisor is looking for the next guy he can trust. Do you feel like having you get, working with someone like you guys? Um, initially for a lot of these creators is is probably the most ideal way to go at first. It makes sense because it gets them in the door with a trusted source and then their name is, you know, and these music supervisors aren't dumb and they do a lot of their own work of going out and just discovering their own artists. They're like music junkies, you know, they want to be at the live shows and they want to, they want to discover the next big people because it also lets them kind of be vested into it. It's like, you know, the music supervisor on Grey's Anatomy that played the fray and now the fray blew up, you know, and it was like that music supervisor was vested now, wow. sort of, in their career and say they can always say now, hey, I, you know, I made the fray blow up, you know, <laughs> and that, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And so it's because they love music like I love music like you do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you got to kind of, it's, it is nice if you can get in and then all of a sudden your name is like, oh, wow, they, they, they do have great music. And then they're going to ask me, well, what's up with them? I get those questions all the time. What's going on? What's their story? Now I pitch them to them and they say, hey, do you think they would create something else for me? Because I really like their sound and I like their style and I have this other project coming up and I don't have much music in this area. Would they create something new? And that's a huge area because mm -hmm. in this business, if you can get an opportunity and you can deliver and on a deadline, deadlines are huge, then, you know, you, and you deliver, they're going to keep coming back. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, that that's your easiest way in the foot in the door is when you get a customer, you know, on BeatStars, you get an opportunity and then you can listen to them and go, oh yeah, you have these other needs. Okay. Oh, this is just one track that you're getting, but you're filling up an album and you're trying to do some other mood pieces and maybe you have some lyrics or maybe you just have some ideas or, you know, you can throw out some instruments or some other comparable songs. And then you can go back in the studio and you can nail that and deliver in a timely manner. You're they're just going to keep coming back every single time. And it's really, it's like balls in your court bin to just take that as far as you want to take it. That sounds great, man. So it, it to me, it, it sounds like, you know, where you, what position that you're in right now, you're always looking for some amazing new music. So I recommend everyone listening to this podcast right now to to go go on BeatStars, beatstars.com slash sound saves and message Mike right now. And send him send him some send him some music, right? And um, I think I mean hopefully you check your messages pretty often. And, um, oh, I, yeah, right away, really, you know, cool. and music I'll listen to within a day or two, you know, it just again, go back to that earlier in the podcast, is it make sure it grabs me, you know, um, it, that's, that's the key, you know, just, and make sure it's mixed properly and arranged properly and all that, because that, it's just like with music supervisors and with me, it's like, they don't, you know, if you could just go and you could get it right the first time every time, then, you know, it saves so much of that, that, extra hassle or explaining back to somebody and saying hey uh you know it's thanks for sending but you know you got to follow these these guidelines here well mike i appreciate your time this was uh an, an awesome discussion awesome talk about you know a, a part of the business that normally not everyone gets a chance to listen to thank you once again for for joining us thank you for being uh, a beat stars guru being someone that really uh took advantage of the platform and did some amazing things with it um, and being an advocate for us as well. Appreciate that so much. Uh, do you have any final thoughts for uh, for anybody listening today? Well, I think likewise um, to you and thank you and for all your hard work. And, you know, I've seen this platform grow. It's something that's amazing now from, you know, the display, the graphical user interface, the ability to, I mean, I'll throw in SoundCloud, for instance. We had two million plays before we could get any monetization. We have another million since then. And thanks to BeatStars, we, you know, we're now monetizing music that we weren't really able to monetize before. SoundCloud isn't really a, a sales platform for music. You know, it's a listening environment. And so we are just losing out on all of that. And now, you know, BeatStars is bringing something from that and with YouTube content ID and now even daily motion and audio Mac. I mean, I'm just amazed. Uh, I hope the app 
comes back again one day. Oh yeah, uh, and awesome. And then yeah, just thank you and keep up the great work. And I know you're on the cutting edge of everything and anything I can do to help. Um, and you know, I'm I'm here. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it, man. Enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Make sure to visit uh, Mike's company, SoundSaves.com, I believe, and his uh, page on, on BeatStars, BeatStars.com slash SoundSaves. Thank you. Thank you.